Good day everybody, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, I welcome you. If you're not new here, I welcome you back. So in today's little vlog, I'm basically holidaying in my own area of North Wales, funnily enough. So to keep a long story short, I was supposed to do some voluntary work for a woman here. We're in a place called Blyna Festiniog, up in, the, in North Wales here. We used to make fun of this little place uh, when we were kids because it's renowned for being gray, miserable, rainy, grim in general, basically. Um, but she does an Airbnb, but she also, when she has gaps within the Airbnb, she has work away. Like um, you can come here and do a little bits of work, things that might need fixing up and things like that in exchange for the accommodation. The place is called 120 Mountain Home Holiday. Well, good morning, folks. Welcome to a nice grey blind of Festiniog. I did tell you it gets pretty grey around here, didn't I? And that's why we used to make fun of it as kids. Anyways, the clouds have come in. The clouds have come in. The rain came this morning. The rain has gone. The wind is still here. So we're postponing a little hike we were going to do this morning, stroke this afternoon for this evening. So it's supposed to clear up this evening. Potential sunset opportunity. So that's what we're going to do. So um, at the moment, I'm just looking at some nice little hikes that Hazel has left in this information booklet here. So I've got the map out. So I'm just checking out where we can begin and where we can end. So I just found a nice little circular route, I think. Um, you can park up just outside of a place called Tanagrishai. And there's a nice little waterfall quite, quite nearby there. And then from there, you can go up the Slate Trail, I believe it's called. So you go up through all the, the old quarry areas, I guess, and through some old little villages, I believe. And then you go past a lake called Comordin, head up past there to one of the peaks here called Moyle, Moylwyn Maur. <laughs> I did remember that before I started waffling on, but yeah, Moylwyn Maur. And then from there, you can come down to another small lake uh, with a nice little dam called Stullan Dam. And then from there, you just follow the, the road down back to the car park. You can do it the other way around also, obviously, but I think we're going to go with the way I've just described. So, um, Right, let's go and see what the weather's doing. I've been editing for a couple of hours now. It's getting worse, you know. <laughs> the clouds getting lower, the wind's getting stronger. It's still not raining. So it's supposed to be getting better, not worse. Anyways, while we're waiting around, I think what we're gonna do is we're gonna go and get some food from a, a nearby village called Penryn Daedraith. Try and say that after a couple of shandies. Um, so yeah, it's been recommended by the woman that is the host here, Hazel. She um, says it's really, really nice. Some nice vegan food there. I like my vegan food. I'm not vegan, but I do like vegan food a lot. And if it's done well, win-win. So I think we should just go and head there while we're waiting for the weather to um, sort itself out. Anyways, without further ado, let's leave the 120 Mountain Holiday Home and head to Penryn Deidre. Well, folks, as soon as I said I might find it hard to park, I found a space straight away. The eating gorilla is just here. So this is Pen Penryn Daedraith. Never been here before in my life, folks. Here's the eating gorilla. Vegan cafe and restaurant. 
some menus. Well, let's go in, eh? We'll read the menu in there. So we've got many beautiful things on offer here. Everything's vegan on the menu though. I've gone for the barbecue chicken wrap, right there. And we've got some beautiful smoothies. Beers, ciders, wines, everything. I've gone for the green, gorilla green smoothie. It's also a nice breakfast menu as well, before 11.30. Yeah, everything sounds tasty, man. Lots of nice teas, nice coffees, loads of nice cakes. So yeah, I went for the Gorilla Green one, which includes curly kale, lemongrass, banana, mango, coconut water, pineapple juice. It's lush. <laughs> well, there we go. One barbecue chicken wrap melt, vegan style with a nice salad it's huge man beautiful well i don't usually go for something that tastes like meat you know like fake chicken or fake burgers or whatever i usually go for something kind of green if i'm going for vegan stuff but this is nice man proper tastes kind of like a chicken wrap <laughs> funnily enough but no well nice Spot on. Ah, well there we go folks that was absolutely beautiful absolutely beautiful munch got myself some cake for later some lemon and lime cake vegan obviously but um yeah that place is really nice man i got i was speaking to the girl behind the counter and they do a lot of work with the charity for the um for the gorillas you know over in the congo they were selling all sorts of bits there like local honeys um dog treats uh little souvenirs and all that kind of thing so a really nice little cafe so they called it the Eating Gorilla uh, originally and then a woman from this area, a customer came in who worked f for this kind of charity towards the, the gorillas in the Congo. So the names just kind of fitted in well. So she asked, would you like to, you know, kind of do something together? So that's, that's how they kind of fundraise this charity. So that's a really nice thing to know. So if you're ever in Penryn de Dreith, which it's only like three and a half miles out of um, Porth Madog, which is a little bit, little bit more famous than here, I guess. But if you're anywhere near here, I highly recommend eating there. Absolutely delicious food. The smoothie was pff, one of the best I've had ever. I think, I, <laughs> honest to God, the, I think it was the lemongrass in there. It was absolutely beautiful, spot on. But anyways, the rain has stopped. It's still gray as hell. But we're gonna head back now. We'll head back to the house See how the weather is and then maybe head out for a little hike. I'm gonna go for a hike anyway Whether we go to the top of the mountain or not. I don't know. It depends on the visibility But at least we'll drive to where the waterfall is and we'll walk up a little bit of the the slate path and see how far we get eh? See what happens. So um, let's go and do this Well, well, well the weather hasn't gotten any better the clouds are still really low folks so what we're going to do is instead of um wasting the evening i'm going to drive to that car park i was talking about before by tanagrishai we're going to go and check the waterfall out there and i think the lake Komodin isn't too far so we could potentially walk over to that check it out because the cloud shouldn't be that low and then we may go up to the dam as well see if we've got time i'm not sure if you have to walk up there or if you can drive up there if you can drive up there bonus if we can't, well, we'll just take a walk if we can. There's no point in going too high because like I've just shown you there, the clouds are just, the, you won't, so we're not gonna see anything. We're not gonna see anything. We had a little break before, but it just came straight back. So instead of wasting the evening, let's go and do, just do what we can do basically. Grab the keys, get in the car, have a little mission, eh? Folks, 
Well, here we go. This is the beginning of the path. This is actually the beginning of the um, Snowdonia Slate Trail, the Slate Trail we were talking about before. So, clearly it heads up here, but there's a little waterfall here, so let's go and check this out, shall we? I'm not sure if this is the actual waterfall that we've come to visit, or whether this is just a, a little warm-up. I'm not too sure. I didn't think it was so close to the, to the car park, that's why I'm thinking. Okay, let's go and check it out anyway. Well, yes, folks, it, this is the actual waterfall. I missed how close the, uh, the car park was. Pretty nice, pretty nice. So the path continues up there, and, and that heads up to uh, Sin Comorzin, Comorzin Lake. So we may as well head up there. Looks like it's brightened enough a little bit. It's just the clouds come over very, very fast, you know, so that's why I'm dubious to go up to the peak, because you can be up there one second, it's fine. Next minute. You don't know where you are, you know, and I don't know if I can be doing with that now. So um, let's head on up a little bit further up the path. We'll see how we go. Maybe let's go as far as we can. But look at this, folks. If you're not from around here, I guess this is quite different. That is just a mountain of broken up slate. You can see that, right? So yeah, let's head on up here to the lake. We'll go as far as the lake and then make our minds up if we're going to go any further up the mountain. I'm guessing the mountain we're going to head up is that way. There's another pretty nice waterfall, slightly further up. This one's got a beautiful pool actually. Beautiful side pool there. Check these walls out. Pure slices of slate. Cool, eh? So yeah, amazing scenes. The blue skies are showing, peeps. The blue skies are showing. So Tanagrishai in English means below the steps. Tanagrishai, below the steps. So the town itself down here has a population of about 350. And you can see the mountains behind it look like steps. Step, 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 step. Hence the name Tanagrishai. Below the steps. The village below the steps. Clever, eh? Oh, stunning, man. You've got the river running here. Just above it here, you've got like a little lake a little oasis the water pours back down into the river here slowly oh, beautiful man beautiful here we go there's a better little view of the little lake the little oasis above the river don't know what it is but i just love that Here we go. Sin Comorthen. Comorthen Lake. Looks like this is where the path diverts over the river. So the path leads leads up that way. But let's have a little wander this way first, shall we? Let's go and have a little look at what's going on here first. But yeah, I was looking at the map before. That's the way the path meanders. Have a look at that old ruin there. Check that out. Way. Nice rugged Welsh lake for you guys. And I've just noticed a nice little white building down there. That looks very interesting. Should we go and check it out? It's an old building up here. Old remnants of an old building there. But this white one looks like it's really well kept. A little generator outside of it which is running so something's something's going down <laughs> let's go and have a walk we're not doing anything wrong we're gonna just gonna have a walk past a little nosy shall we look at that man you know back in the day someone living right there look there's even remnants of an old building yeah let's have a walk right over there let's go and do that Oh, 
all the windows are boarded up. Yeah, very interesting. I wonder what's going on there. Look at this. This will be used as a shelter by the sheep and stuff, I guess. Obviously an old building used for something back in the day, but I'm guessing all the cattle come in here for shelter from the wind and the rain, you know, when it's bad. Oh, well, there we go. It's come out the back entry, isn't it? Hey. Anyways, let's head on up there. So yeah, I can see in the distance there now, the path runs right alongside the other side of the lake there and goes right in between the gap of the mountain there. So it'll take you right round and it'll take you to the tops of the mountains beyond there. So I've just come across an old disused mining tunnel from back in the day. The water's still flowing through. Do you know what I've just realised as well? Do you know what I've just realised? This moment, this moment. I haven't put my hiking boots on. I've just got my normal boots, my normal shoe boots type things. Shit. Oh well. Damn. Let's see what we can do. I'm just thinking for the for the rest of the walk. That's all I'm thinking. Look at this one. Oh man, that's pretty freaky, you know. To me, that's quite freaky. I really don't know how people go uh, mining and going into all caves, caving. Oh man, freaks me out. Even just looking at that is freaking me out a little bit. I get claustrophobic, I must say. But look at that. Wonder if people still go down there. I'm sure people still kind of go down there for some reason. Anyways, look, this is it from the opposite view. I just noticed this opening here. So. Whew. Remnants, folks, remnants. Well, let's go up, shall we? Be rude not to. Beautiful view. Whatever this was used for, work or play, they had a beautiful view from the window. That's for sure. Let's crack on down here for a second. Come down here, folks. Come down here with me. Come and have a little gander down here with me. More remnants. Everything made up of slate. Slate, slate, slate. I can see where the path is going and it's quite long. It goes right in between the gap there, like I just said before. That's too far to do now. We've only got about another hour of daylight, basically. So um, it's gonna take it's gonna take about an hour to get just past there. So I think it's a little bit pointless going to the peak from this way now. I think what we're gonna do, we'll head back to the car and we'll whiz back over and see if we can get to the dam in time before the sun goes down. And potentially when we get back to the house, we might have a beautiful sky after the sunset or we might even get back before the sunset who knows let's go and check it out anyway we're in the shade here and I don't like it the sunshine to be had over there somewhere so let's uh, get back to the car and head over to the dam well I think before we leave it'll be rude not to take a little little trip over this bridge eh? let's go and check this old ruin out here before we leave look at this I like the square edges that's for sure looks like an old chimney yeah look the hole up there the old chimneys to keep warm in the old winters here in the North Wales wilderness I mean, to be fair, this all looks quite square, you know, very well put together. And then over here, this looks like old, I don't know, this looks like a different type of stone. You can imagine back in the day how vibrant it was here with people, how busy it used to be, how noisy it used to be. Loads of work going on, loads of shouting, loads of machinery. So you see in the distance there, see how fast them clouds are moving. 
they're just flowing past this crevice in between here just flowing past the weather could change any moment folks so unpredictable up here mad that's one of the problems with just coming to stay somewhere for a couple of nights you don't get time to see everything you want you know you kind of come here thinking i'm just going to chill find a couple of things to do and then when you start looking into it and researching around the area you're like shit man there's a lot of things to see and do here so uh i usually try and squeeze as much as i can can in as you know but days like today we would be up i'm guessing that's probably that could be the the people who are going to head up we'd be up there for sunset now we'd have left earlier the weather would have let us we'd be up there now enjoying the sunset that's that was the plan right and look at it you can see the sun still shining on the top of it there <laughs> so it can be a bit frustrating with the weather when you're when you're trying to plan hikes you know especially up in the mountains the higher peaks it's so unpredictable you know like i say all day today the has been really low and overcast and absolutely a beautiful evening now How about that? Lovely. So folks, we didn't end up walking to the dam. It would have taken us, I don't know how long, but too long for the, we wouldn't have had a sunset or anything there. So what we're gonna do tomorrow, if uh, the weather's good in the morning, we'll take a hike up to the dam and potentially up to one of the peaks. And before we set off in the morning, we're leaving here tomorrow, so. So as I was driving back then from uh, the dam back to here uh, to catch this sunset, I stopped off at the shop quickly to get some groceries, a few little bits and bobs. And I noticed that the self-service um, machine, um, the, all the information, all the kind of instructions were in Welsh, not in English, you know? So um, yeah, it's a, it, this is a very Welsh area of Wales, basically. Very traditional, very... Um, Welsh is the first language for a lot of people here. You walk down the street, you're hearing most people are speaking Welsh, you know, absolutely. It's a really authentic, that's the word I'm looking for. It's a very authentic part of Wales. Like not much has changed in a way, you know, up here. They are quite far away from any big towns and cities, I guess, you know? So um, when, you, when you're kind of going around here, you can see that there's a, there's a real kind of community feel here. I mean, where I live, down by the coast, it's very touristic, you know, there's a lot of, um, yeah, people that aren't from the area and things like that, but you get the feeling of here, like, you know, everyone has been brought up here, everyone's kind of, you know, their their, fam their fathers are from here, their, fa their father's father, their, you know, um, it's got that whole feel of community, very much so, and very Welsh, very Welsh. It's nice, you know, it's nice to see that places like this uh, still exist, and that, Welsh language is getting used as the first language. So if you want a really authentic kind of experience, there are things to do around here as far as the zip line. Um, there's a lot of tourist attractions as far as like outdoor stuff to do, hiking, obviously, but it's not very well known. Not many people really come here, you know? Blind Eye Fistinyog isn't a place where people would think, right, I want to go there kind of thing. But if you want a nice authentic feel, a, well, a really good Welsh experience, um, yeah, I'd come here definitely, you know, and just kind of go into the little shops and the little cafes and that, and you'll you'll hear everyone speaking Welsh and um, just a nice sense of community here, definitely. And I didn't see this as a child. We I, we used to just see this as being boring, slate mountains, grey. I'm an adult now, <laughs> but no, seriously, I've really had a nice couple of days up here. It's really surprised me actually. I'm definitely going to come back here definitely 100% gonna come back here and see more. Tomorrow, hopefully, we'll get up to the dam. We'll get up there. Um, I'm guessing the dam is just behind there. I can see it there, to be honest with you. I think I can see it just there at the top. So we'll walk up there, and then we'll get onto a peak, hopefully. <laughs> 